rather than talk about coronavirus, kind of like we already have, and what people can read in the news, I did kind of stumble upon an article that is all about the scientific terms and jargon related to coronavirus. So, okay, can we go back? So I think I might have shared this with you, but there are a a bunch of, um, I will say, people who don't know better on Facebook that are pointing out that Clorox wipes, if you read the back label, say that they help fight against human coronavirus. And so when, when did I thought I shared this with you from social media? So, I mean, I've seen it three, four or five times, like from different people, like there, it's just this one image that keeps recirculating. But, um, again, like I said, it's from people who don't know any different, but human coronavirus was basically the same thing as SARS. It's the same type of disease. And that's kind of what you're about to talk about, right? That where these, I guess, categories come from. Because a coronavirus is a yeah. classification of a virus. A it is not of, a name, right. even a, though we're calling this coronavirus-19. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to... It's not going to be super quick, but we'll, we'll wrap up within 10 minutes. I learned a little bit reading this, and I know most of it as far as the terms and the jargon, but it kind of ties things back together, and okay. that's kind of where you were going. So... It's A to Z, and we're not going to talk about... I just, there were 27 pages that I printed out. Um, and so the first is ARDS, A-R-D-S, Acute Respiratory Disease Syndrome. Okay. So a syndrome is a syndrome. It can be caused by many different you know, things or infectious agents. Uh, acute means it happens very quickly. Um Basically, people start breathing rapidly. They're short of breath. They can get blue because they can't exchange oxygen properly. And this ARDS, typically happens in kids, yes? All sorts of people, actually. Mm. Like, I, I lost a, a patient a couple of years ago to ARDS. Mm. That wasn't, I, we figured out the exact, you know, reason that we lost it. But all of a sudden, you know, just couldn't exchange oxygen and breathe, and breathe well. Gotcha. And so ARDS is a potential complication of COVID-19. So that is one cause of ARDS. Gotcha. And I do believe that is why most people are dying because of this syndrome. Right. Uh, the next thing, alveoli. Mm-hmm. You know what that is, right? Can right. you explain in your oh, words? Oh, God. Um, no, pockets in the lungs. Yeah, air, air sacs in the lungs. And so your lungs are not like a big balloon. They're mm-hmm. more like a sponge. And, and the voids in the sponge are, are the air pockets or the alveoli. And the reason that's important, and you may hear about it, is it's thought that this COVID-19 virus binds to those cells, okay? And that's that's kind of getting down to the nitty-gritty, mm-hmm. another one of those dumaflachi type of, of terms as to why it's causing, you know, really these severe signs. <clears throat> the next uh, phrase is antiretroviral drugs, and so... We know an antiviral drug, this specifically says antiretroviral drugs. The reason you may hear about this in the news is actually the way they work is antiretrovirals, they block or slow down down an enzyme that retroviruses produce and use to chop up DNA. And that's how they insert themselves into a, a DNA So strand. a retrovirus is a different classification of a virus. Correct. Okay, because I just want to be clear. Yes. The AIDS virus is a retrovirus. Uh, FIV, feline in, uh, immunodeficiency virus, retrovirus. And so the reason that this is kind of interesting to me is it was thought Well, COVID-19 virus uses this same enzyme in its pathogenesis or its its pathogenic effect, if you will. And so early on, they thought they could use antiviral drugs to help fight the infection. Unfortunately, that did not prove true. The antiretroviral drugs. The antiretroviral. So they are looking at other antiviral drugs. Remdesivir is one that they're really looking at right now. Mm. Okay, so um, you were talking about the antiviral effect, the anti-coronavirus effect of Clorox wipes. Important to realize that antibacterial means a product or thing or substance kills bacteria, so, not viruses. But anti, right? So there's anti just means it decreases to a safe level. Uh, against anti, yeah, yeah. So 
If you want to get deeper into it, there are bactericidal, bacteriostatic. Bactericidal means they kill the bacteria. Bacteriostatic uh, means they kind of keep it at, reduces, at bay and, yeah. and reduce the number. So important thing there, antibacterials really are not going to be effective against most viruses other than kind of debulking and, that, and, and reducing also the, the, load. the only really way is like secondary infections, right? So you'll often see people that have a virus that do go on antibiotics yep. it's to, to battle against a secondary infection. And so antibiotic or antimicrobial, same thing. It's a, a drug that kills or reduces the, the load of a bacteria, not a virus. We really don't have that many, as we just kind of spoke about the antivirals and antiretrovirals, we don't have that many drugs uh, against viruses or effective against viruses. CDC, what does that stand for? Centers for Disease Control. Okay, where is the main lab? Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. So we're very familiar with CDC. We have a lot of clients that work there. We have, uh, we, we, you know, we drive by there occasionally from that part of town. Uh, so headquartered in Atlanta, but other uh, labs across the country. So they're hugely important uh, with what's going on, and, and we tend to follow their recommendations when disease outbreaks occur. Coronavirus, so it's actually a group of what's classified as an RNA virus um, in animals and people. In people, they primarily cause respiratory illnesses, um, so lungs, throat, airways. In animals, primarily gastrointestinal, but can cause respiratory illness in the, in the cat. COVID-19 is caught, so that's the disease. Mm -hmm. So I shared with you like five days ago, I'm such an idiot at times. I didn't, I'm like, oh, COVID-19, that's cool. So CO stands for coronavirus, mm -hmm. VI stands for viral, D stands for disease, and then the 19 is the year it was first, it first originated. So that is the disease. And so what is the name of the virus that causes the disease? Do you know? I would imagine it's SARS. Can you read SARS. upside? Can you read upside? No. S-A-R-S-C-O-V-2. Okay. Uh, they define in this glossary CT scan. And the reason they bring that up is the computer tomography scan is important to help identify suspected coronavirus patients by CT in their lungs. Um, incubation period, that's the time it takes an infected person to start showing symptoms. Most people develop C or excuse me, COVID-19 symptoms by day 12, but maybe sooner or later. Novel coronavirus, NCOV. Um, that's just saying that novel means new, a new coronavirus that hasn't been studied yet or has just emerged. When SARS, COV-2, so uh, SARS-CoV-2 is essentially COVID-19. That is the etiolo etiological agent, the, the causative agent of COVID-19. Do you yes. have a definition of SARS in there just so that we don't terrify people? Because it truly just means something respiratory, yada, yada. Let me uh, see if I can find it. Gosh, I was going to say sudden acute respiratory, but I'm, I'm wrong there. So, yeah, important thing there, SARS-CoV-2 is the viral agent causing COVID-19. It is. Severe acute respiratory syndrome. Okay. So it was right so, there. So, yeah. Um, pandemic. We've all learned what that word means, I think, uh, this past week. Just an epidemic that is spread to multiple continents or countries, typically thought to be worldwide. Um, PPE. Personal protection equipment. Yep. We use that. We, we wear PPE when we're... Uh, I guess using disinfectants when we're doing dental cleanings, we, we take those uh, precautions here at the clinic on a daily basis. All right, so PUI. In regards to what? Person under investigation is what that stands for. Okay. Uh, so people with COVID-19 like symptoms who are not confirmed, uh, they are called PUIs. Okay. So they may have had contact with somebody who has the disease, somebody that may be suspected to have the disease, and basically um, they're just kind of watched. They're on the watch list. A PUM is a person under monitoring, and they, again, do not have the symptoms uh, or confirmed disease, but they have uh, they've definitely been in contact with someone with the disease or presumed to have the disease. So they're, they're monitored once again. I don't know. I just thought it was you know, PUI, PUM. 
we come up with these little slang words. We joked in the past about new uh, veterinarians getting out of vet school. They come out with all these phrases like that. Oh, I can't yeah. think of any, but all these. X slap. Yeah. Um, oh, oh a tikabo. A, a what? Yeah. A, a tikabo. Yeah. Total ear canal ablation. Yeah, anyway. Bula osteotomy. Bula osteotomy, couldn't think. So um, SARS-CoV-2, we already talked about that, the novel coronavirus that was first noticed in Wuhan, China. Um, I heard from my son. So you're confusing me. So SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19, they're essentially one and the same. SARS-CoV-2 is the Because that's the, the way you're agent. describing it, but I've never seen it that way in any other news outlet. COVID-19 is the current disease that we are facing. The causative agent is SARS-CoV-2. Okay. Right? So maybe we can say AIDS was the disease and HIV was the causative agent. I see. Okay. So uh, self-quarantine is on the list. Everybody you know, kind of knows what that is. That's pretty pretty uh, literal and easy and to what understand. are you going from some sort of um, uh, dictionary for this came from o b o o p b dot org and it's just a news agency they thought they would put this out because they tried to kind of uh, dummy down some of the jargon and, and make it more understandable. And so they wanted to go ahead and, and go the other way and put out some scientific words and give you the meaning. So if, if, if we start getting more technical, people would understand that. So OPB is the Office of Planning and Budgeting. So this is Dot a government. Org. This is a government okay. website. So maybe. It is. I'm telling know. you. I okay. looked it up. Okay. I just found it on a story and thought it was interesting. OPB.Georgia.gov. Um so I would assume that this this is a government website. So thanks for all of that sharing. I don't know that you necessarily cleared anything up for me. Um, I think I confused you more, evidently. A little bit, yeah. So, so going back to relating it to the clinic, we are continuing to watch and honestly, obviously, educate ourselves as much as possible. And we will make decisions uh, as new information arises. But for now, we are continuing to stay open, regular business hours. We've increased our cleaning and sanitation process. Um, and essentially, like I said, we're here to serve the community and, and their pets still. Mm-hmm.